In this lecture, we are going to look at how to derive the dimension of derived quantities. And also, we are going to look at how to derive the units of derived quantities. Okay? These are the two things we are going to learn. Okay? We are going to start, first of all, on dimensions. Then we enter unit. You are going to see a lot of derivation. Okay? Let's see. First of all, what is dimension? As you can see in this place, dimension for derived quantity is tracing back quantities to their source or root. Okay? You agree with me we have in physics fundamental quantities and derived quantities. Derived quantities, they are coming from fundamental quantity. So all the derived quantity in physics, we want to see how they all came about. Where are you coming from? We want to trace your origin. We want to trace your background, okay? It is like tracing back to the origins or fundamental components that make up a more complex quantity. Just like wanting to know where you come from, okay? Finding out the basic unit like length, mass, and time that combine together to define a derived quantity. Before we continue, you must put at the back of your mind that we have seven fundamental quantities. Seven fundamental quantities. Those quantities, you must have them at the back of your mind, okay? The first one is length, okay? The dimension for length is L. We are going to look at unit later. The dimension for mass is M. The dimension for time is T. The dimension for electric current is I. The dimension for thermodynamic temperature is this zero with I think at the center. Amount of substances is N, the dimension, dimension, not unit for now. We're going to look at units later. Finally, luminous intensity, the dimension is J. Okay? And you must know that these three are the most common length, mass, at time. Most of the derived quantities or derived dimensions, they are coming from this three. These are the basic fundamental quantities. Every other quantity you will ever see are coming from here. Okay? These seven are the foundation of all quantities. They are like the origin of quantities. Any other quantity such as speed, velocity, acceleration, force, pressure, and so on and so forth. They are all coming from here. This is where they are coming from. They are roots. If you are asked to derive a quantity, they are asking you to trace it back to this source. Because these are the sources okay, of every other quantity. For instance, this question is asking us to derive the dimensions of speed and velocity. Okay? So, let's start with speed. What the question is saying Trace back the root of speed. It's like, want to know the DNA of speed, where you are coming from. The first thing you should do is, what is speed? Speed is what? Distance over time. Okay? Distance over time. Now, as I said, what is distance? Distance is the space between two points. Okay? That is, the length between these two points. So, as you can see, distance is length. If you go back to the fundamental quantities, as you can see, length is here. This length you are seeing here is representing both distance and displacement. Because they are talking about the space between two points. Space between two points. So, therefore, it means we can represent this with L. This is time. It's also a base quantity. If you have seen very well, if you have checked very well. So we represent it by T. Okay? It means therefore, speed can be represented by this over this. That is length over time. We represent it as this. Because of this over, we put this as minus one. This is how to represent speed. 
as per dimension. One thing you should put at the back of your mind now is, if you are out to find speed, you can write it like this. Say dimension of speed, you put this square bracket, is equal to this L T minus 1. So you can see, this square bracket we are using to wrap across them, that's around them. This is the professional way of representing dimension, okay? Professional way of representing dimension. But you will see in some books, the ability like this, no problem. But when you also see them like this, with square bracket, please know that what? We are talking about the same thing. I have done this for speed. Let's do for velocity. For velocity, you agree with me? Velocity is displacement over time. This displacement is distance with direction. We don't care. We want to check the root. You agree with me? We are talking about distance between two points in a specific direction. As long as we are talking about length between two points, distance, we are talking about length. This is the father of displacement, the father of distance, the father of all of them. So therefore, we are going to replace this now with L again, this with T. As you can see, both velocity and speed are the same. They have the same dimension. So we can represent them like this. So two of them have the same dimension. Hope you understand that. Now we are tracing it back to their father, to their mother. This is their father, their mother, okay? The next question says, derive the dimension of acceleration. What is acceleration? Where are you coming from? Who is your father? Who is your mother? We are tracing you back to the origin. Acceleration is equal to velocity over time. Right? We have just seen this one and that. This is simply length over time. Why this is time? Right? Acceleration. So I can come here now to say acceleration like this is equal to this. That is, I put this here, I put this here, I put this here. If you want. Okay? Now, what is the meaning of the discipline means L over t, divide by, divide by t over 1. Then if you turn this to multiplication now, that is like this, you have to turn this. So it means it's L, this multiplied by this is t square. So it means you can write it like this, L over t square, which is equal to L t minus 2. Because of this now, we put this to be minus, minus 2. Okay? Leave it like this, or you say Okay? So, this is the dimension of what? Acceleration. The dimension of what? Acceleration. Let's look at more of other dimensions. Now, derive the dimension of power. This power is not a basic quantity. It's not a fundamental quantity. It's a derived quantity. What we are saying is, tell us where power is coming from. Show us the dimension of power to understand where it's coming from. The root of power in the basic or in the fundamental quantity. Now, let's see. You agree with me that power is equal to work over time. Okay? So this you are seeing here is also equals to force multiplied by velocity. Because work is force times distance. This is what? Force times distance. If you carry this distance now, you join it with time, it means you are having now velocity. That's what we are trying to describe here. Just a basic way of explaining where this is coming from. So force times velocity is just coming from here. 
Now, you will agree with me, all these are still all derived. We are going to the root, the root of this. We have not got it to the root. What is velocity? Velocity, you agree with me, is a displacement over time. Displacement o Distance o are all talking about the distance or the length between two points. That is, length between two points. So, both this so distance so are talking about this space between two points. And that space is called length. So, this velocity you are seeing here is actually length over time. Instead of, say, displacement over time, even speed, instead of, say, distance over time, we say length over time. This length is the basic form of all of them, that is displacement and distance, okay? What about force? Force, on the other hand, is ma, that is mass times acceleration, okay? Let me use another line. This is what mass times acceleration multiplied by length. I'm going to put n now. L is the dimension for length. White capital letter T is the dimension for time. Now I'm still having MA. This M now is a basic quantity. We're going to represent it by M. Okay? Let me use another line. That is M. Capital letter M is the dimension of what? Mass. Acceleration. We have no replaced acceleration. Acceleration is velocity over time. Let's pull this guy. I know I shouldn't do this, missing all this, just for you to understand. I'm done with this. I'm done with this. What is remaining is this, okay? That's why we are still working on it. What is velocity again? Velocity is length over time. Only this one. Length over time. I'm going straight to the dimension, okay? Why this T is T like this, okay? That is T like this. Multiply by this. Okay? Now, you can represent this by writing M multiplied by L over T square. This one still remains over T. Okay? So, what you have done so far now is M, L, L, that is 1, 2, raised to the power 2, over, this is 2, this is 1, 3. You can write this as M, this, because this is at the denominator, you can, you can simply do raised to the power minus 3, okay? Let me move this, okay? So this is the dimension of power. This is the dimension of power. So it means, therefore, that this power is rooted in these fundamental quantities, mass, length, and time, okay? What if you are asked to derive the dimension of pressure? Pressure, we want to see your dimension, what you are made of. That is, pressure is force over area, okay? Now, what is force, force? Force, again, is MA, mass times acceleration. What is A? Because M is a fundamental quantity, but A is not. We need to get to the root of A. A is length over T squared. Remember, displacement, distance are represented by L. Why this is time. Remember, acceleration is velocity over time, which is here is displacement over time. Then we pull this T. All these are equals to this over D square. This is represented by L. This is already T. Okay? That is how we got this. Now, all we need to do is to come back here to see this. To get it. That is to get the dimension of this guy is equal to force, the dimension of force, 
over the dimension of area. Now, the dimension of pressure is equal to what is the dimension of force? We are agree that is MA. So it means this M, we can change it to capital letter M like this. Okay? To represent this. What about this is represented by this? That is this over this. Okay? This is only the force. Now the area. Area is length times length, which is this. So, we are going to say everything here over this square. Okay? So, if you solve this now, you agree with me, this is like this. Like this. This one, because it's at the denominator, you represent it like this. Okay? We are clear this upper one now, all over again, this. Then we go further again to remove this from the denominator. This still remains the same. This is still here. Then this. Then we bring this here. Because of this over, we put minus two here. So this is a dimension of what? Pressure. What if you are asked to derive the dimension of momentum? Momentum is always equal to mass times velocity. We know that velocity is this over this. Okay? So the dimension of velocity is this, this raised to power 1. That is minus 1. Now, we come back here. Dimension of momentum is equal to mass, which is cap letter M, multiplied by velocity, which is this. Okay? So, this is the dimension of momentum. Let's look at it. It says, which of the following dimensions represent impulse? So, this requires you to actually know the meaning of impulse. Impulse is actually force multiplied by time. Okay? Force multiplied by time. So, what is force? Force is mass times acceleration. Then we put this time here. Okay? Now, what is acceleration? Acceleration is velocity over time. Okay? Mass, what is velocity? Velocity is length over time. Length over time. Times time. Okay? So this velocity at the numerator is length over time alone. What about this time is still there? Over time is still there. To express all this, remember this is mass, mass. Let me write the name in full for all of them. This is mass. Multiply by length. Multiply by this time that is here. If you have something like this, what is the meaning? When you have another one at the top like this, it means time times time. This and this will cancel to have mass length over time. As per dimension, we use M to represent mass. We use L to represent length. We use capital letter T to represent time. It means, therefore, we are having here now mass length by time, which you can rewrite as this. Because of this over, you put here minus 1. Because this is the only guy at the denominator, we can remove this and put minus 1. That is indices. Okay? So this is the answer. MLT 
t raised to the power minus 1. ml, t raised to the power minus 1. So b is the answer, okay? b is the answer for this question. Now, let's look at that of unit. The next thing now is to look at unit, derived unit. The unit of length is meter, m. Mass is kilogram, kg. Time is seconds. Electric current is ampere. Thermodynamic temperature is Kelvin. Amount of substance is mole. And luminous intensity is cadela. As you can see, when it comes to units, the SI unit for base quantity are all the seven. Any other unit, unit for speed, unit for acceleration, unit for what? Unit for, for energy, unit for power, all of them will all be coming from this base because this is the foundation of every other quantity you will see in physics. So let's put our high here. If you have to cram this, you cram them. Now, we want to see how to derive other quantity. That is, the unit of derived quantities. We call them derived quantity because they were derived from this fundamental quantity. So, if I want to prove to you how speed was derived, I will come here. How energy was derived, I will come here. How power was derived, I will come here. How pressure was derived, I will come here. But what are you talking about? Is it the derived dimension or derived unit? Now we are dealing with unit. Let's see. A derived unit can be thought of as tracing back the origins or fundamental components that make up a more complex measurement. It's like understanding your own heritage by discovering the basic unit like length, mass, time, that combine to form a more complex unit. Just as you might explore your ancestry to see how different familiar traits have blended to shape who you are, finding out the basic unit that combine to define a derived unit helps us comprehend how this measurement relate to and interact with each other in the world of physics and engineering. The same thing we did for dimension. Derive the units of speed and velocity. Speed, again, is distance over time. What is the unit of distance? Is meter. The unit of time is second. So the unit of distance is meter per second. Or you write it as this. Okay? For velocity, the same thing. Velocity is simply equals to displacement over time. Displacement is like distance. So the unit of this is meter. The unit of this is seconds. So therefore, the unit of velocity is meter by seconds, which you can write as m s to the power 1. Okay? Derive the unit of acceleration. Acceleration is velocity over time. Okay? What is the unit of velocity? You agree with me, velocity, as you have seen, is meter by seconds. Why this is what? Seconds. It means we have to divide this by this because this is represented this. Why this is represented this? Means is this over this, which you can express as this over this for this one, divide by this, that is over one equals to this over this times 1 over this, which is this over s square, which is this per s square, which is this, this, 2. Either this or this. Either of them. So as you can see, this is how the unit of acceleration was formed. Coming from the base unit. Meter is a base unit because meter belongs to length. Y S is a base unit which belongs to time. What if you are told, for instance, to derive the unit of energy? Unit of energy. First of all, what is energy? Energy is a capacity to do work. That is, capacity to perform work. It means that energy and work, they have the same unit. 
Okay? You will agree with me that walk is force times distance. Okay? Walk is force. Force is mass times acceleration. Now multiply by distance. Are you agree with me that this is a new thing? Okay? That is, this MA is a new thing. So we can say one new T, because we are dealing with this now, this group. Okay? One new T is equal to MA. What is M? M is one kg in terms of this one new T. Okay? Multiply by acceleration. Acceleration is meter per second square. Okay? So we cannot replace these guys by this. What about distance? Distance is simply a meter. Okay? So the SI unit of energy, which is also for work, is in joules. Okay? So now I want to represent everything in terms of unit. So in place of this, I will put joules. In place of force, I will put new thing. Okay? One joules is one new thing. Multiply by the distance is what meter. Then I cannot replace the new thing by this. One kg, that is meter by second square, then multiply by this meter. Which finally amounts to this meter a meter is meter square, this raised to power this. Okay? So this is one juice. One juice is equal to this. It means the derived unit of energy is kg meter square by second square. What again you are asked to derive the unit of momentum. Unit of momentum, not the dimension of momentum. They are two different things. The unit of momentum. The unit of momentum, you agree with me that momentum generally is mass times velocity. So what is this? It means you have to replace this with kg. You replace it with what? Meter per seconds. Okay? It means you may leave it like this or you say this. Either of this. These are the derived unit of what? Momentum. 